Okay, so now we're on ready for Frito Crafts Isolation. I never said why this was called Frito Crafts. Probably you can guess, right? Why is that called Frito Crafts? But now we're going to isolate things. And so here's an ASO group. All right, and we're going to figure out ways to, to do this. And this is a very common motif uh, in nature. So this may seem like, wow, just a random group that we're going to put on there, but it's, it's not. So we did an alkyl group last time. And we're doing an ASO group this time. Let me go back. I, I copied a, a, a previous slide to remind you where we are. This was from the beginning of, of um, this chapter. And let me remind you that we first of all talked about halogenation, right? Then nitration, then sulfonation. And we just talked about alkylation a moment ago. And so we're rounding this out. And in, in the beginning, surely that seemed like an overwhelming list. Uh, but now we're rounding this out and then we're going to be done with um, with uh, a, a, We will have a, a good basis for some more elegant reactions, which will round out chapter 19 Okay, so we want to isolate things. How are we going to do that? Well, isolation Huh, look at this Isolation it generally is catalyzed by Lewis Acid in the same way that the other ones are Okay so it might be, it'd be a great idea for you to pause the video and to predict what acylation is going to look like. Predict the mechanism for that. Of course, I'm not, I mean, you know, it's on page 887 of your textbook, so it's not going to hurt you to go look at that, but it'd be better for you to try to guess first, right? Now, here's what you may have guessed. This is cool. You get the complexation with aluminum, which is what you expect. You've seen that several times now. This is like alkylation, right, where the halogen just left. That we've seen before. This is a little bit weird looking. Okay, that's the first time you've seen something like that. Now, if we're trying to think about what this looks like, in terms of its shape and its polarity, what is its shape? What's its hybridization? What's the hybridization? It's S, P, what? S, P. Huh. Can you see there's only two electron groups coming off of there? Right? So it's only S, P hybridized. What's its shape? What's its shape? Its shape is linear, which makes it very easy for a nucleophile to get into, right? Nucleophile gets in there very easily. And what's its polarity? Well, there's this polarity right there. So this is gonna fit very nicely in your understanding of, um, of mechanisms that you've, you've learned in the past, very nicely. So what you should do is here, before you move on, you should predict what this mechanism is gonna look like. We already predicted what this mechanism was gonna look like. That's what I asked you to do in last slide, or I guess this part, right, including that. Uh, now, tell me, what do you think that's going to look like? It's going to look like this. Oops, it doesn't belong there. Plus. Right? What's the name of this thing? What's the name of this mess here? Say it out loud. It's a sigma complex, right? Okay, you've seen this before. Hopefully these are all beginning to look familiar. Now, the acelium complex is stabilized by resonance. Acelium is uh, generally just not rearranged because of, because of the res resonance, all right? So before, when you had alkylation, we had rearrangements, right? But here, since we've got a way to a re resonance structures that will stabilize this, the carbon does not re generally does not rearrange. Okay, draw a complete mechanism for the reaction between benzene and ACL ACL ion. That's what I actually do in the last slide. Please draw that now. 
Okay, now it's important to appreciate that some alkyl groups cannot be attached to a ring by Friedel Crafts alkylation because of rearrangements. We saw that last time, that was the second uh, shortcoming. Okay, they cannot be, some alkyl groups cannot be. Uh, furthermore, polyalkylation was a problem, right? I think, I forget, was that the first problem? This was uh, maybe the second problem. This was maybe the first problem that we saw in, in last in video 19.5. An acylation followed by a Clemenson reduction is a good alternative. So if you're trying to put butyl group on a benzene ring, then uh, you can't do it with an alkylation. You have to do it with an acylation followed by a reduction. By the way, this is a new reaction. It's, you know, you've seen things like this before. You've seen reductions before, but this one's gonna have to be memorized, okay? It's called a Clemenson reduction. And if you take an, a, uh, a benzylic carbonyl carbon, you see it's right there. A benzylic carbon, carbonyl carbon, treat it with zinc and mercury, and HCl and heat, boom, alkylation. All right, now one last uh, slide here. Unlike polyalkylation, polyacylation is generally not observed. We will discuss why later in this chapter. So if I, if I acylate, if I get that guy onto here, right, it's, I can stop right there. It's not gonna go on to a second time. Right, I'm not gonna see this. Okay, that's, that's what this means. All right, now you go practice with conceptual checkpoint 19.8 and 19.10. 19.9 is good too. But specifically asking you to do eight and 10, eight and 10. Good luck.